Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today is all about making parts that actually fit together. So, let's not waste any more time and get into this video. Alright, real quick, I just wanted to get this, this little disclaimer out of the way. Now, when it comes to sizing your parts and getting them fitting perfectly, this is the method that I use. So I'm not saying that this is the right way. I'm not saying it's the wrong way. I'm just saying before we get started, this is my way of doing it. So we've all 3D printed something that has multiple pieces and parts. And sometimes we find ourselves trying to make those pieces and parts fit together and they just won't. And most of the time, and I'm not going to say all the time, but most of the time, the 3D artist that is actually modeling this stuff doesn't actually 3D print. So they don't fully understand all of those tolerances that we need to be able to make our pieces fit together in a good way. So they're usually so tight and we have to sand them and things like that. So. I actually have a solution for you in this video for those specific instances, but it's going to work some of the time, not all the time. And we'll get into that. And the other thing is if you're the one actually modeling your pieces, I'm going to show you how to actually get the right sizes and dimensions to make your tolerances fit beautifully. Now to start this project off, I had to have something to actually 3D print. So I jumped over to Tinkercad and created this wonderful little cube and it is 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters. And I then cut it in half and I made a peg on one side and a hole on the other. Now this peg is 25 millimeters on the X and 25 millimeters on the Y. The hole is the exact same dimension. So there is no changing of the dimensions here. It is an exact perfect fit. So then I threw it into Cura, sliced it up, and then put it on my jump drive and headed down to the workshop and threw this on my FL Sun V400 Delta printer. And the filament I decided to go with was my Polymaker PLA. So once it was all printed, I took it off the printer and this is what I got. And as you can see, it doesn't really fit together very well. Like, I can force it in, but not all the way. And it just, I don't know. It just wasn't working out. So I realized that my dimensions were not printing accurately. So I first need to know how inaccurate my 3D prints are. So I took my calipers and I started measuring. And I found out that my prints are pretty much about 0.1 millimeters off. And it's about 0.1 millimeters on the inside and 0.1 millimeters on the outside. So I know that those were the things wrong with my prints. So once I had the numbers, the next thing is, is to jump over to my special tool that I've created in Google Sheets. And let me show you what that does. So I've developed this special scale conversion calculator. That way I can figure out how inaccurate my prints actually are. So. For what we're actually doing, I figured out that my model, the peg, is supposed to be 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters. So that's where I'm going to put my actual dimensions of the model right here. Then I figured that the printed size is actually 25.10 millimeters by 25.10 millimeters. And that is going to give me the exact scaling that I need to be able to change this in Cura to be able to get an accurate print. Now I'm going to give this calculator to everybody for free so you can use it whenever you want. Now the one thing is, is when you go into this file, make sure you go into file, make a copy. That way you can copy it because you're not going to be able to edit it the way it is right now. You have to be able to duplicate it into your Google Drive. And the last thing, for those of you that are already subscribed to my newsletter and to get emails from me, check your email because I actually already sent this to you. So now that I have my new conversion scale of 99.6%, I'm ready to scale this in Cura. So I'm just going to select both of these models, make sure I have uniform scaling on, and then I'm just going to go to one and do 99.6 and then hit tab just to make sure that everything is 99.6 and we are good. So now I'm ready to slice this and throw it back on my 3D printer. 
So once that second print was done, I went ahead and took it off the printer and tried to fit it. And I tell you what, this, it fits, but I mean, you really have to force it together. And you can see, I mean, it is a very, very tight fit. And when I measured it, it's actually pretty accurate. It is about 0.01 to 0.03 millimeters off, which is really good, which means this is an accurate 3D print, but there's no tolerance. And that's the big thing here. You need to have some tolerance because when you have two exact sizes putting together, I mean, you're gonna have a hard time like putting these together and getting them apart. So once I realized that my printer was actually printing it at an accurate size with my new size conversion for this model, the next thing was to figure out my tolerance so I can get it to fit really nicely and not as tough as this. Now, what the tolerance is, is it's that little extra gap to be able to have your pieces slide in and out easily. So when they are a good tolerance, you can see it goes in and out really easily. But the big thing is, is we need to figure out what that tolerance is. And that is where I run over to Thingiverse and grab this. This is actually a tolerance checker. And I really like this print because it is so easy to read and you know what is going to work for you. Now, I'll go ahead and put a link to this down below in the description for you so you can print this. So let me show you how this works and how you can find your tolerance. All right, real quick, I just have to say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. If you want to be like these awesome people, you will get exclusive access to my private Discord channels where we talk about printing, painting, softwares, and everything else in between. And you'll also be able to see all of my behind-the-scenes content of what I'm working on and what's going on in the workshop. But... I just wanted to say thank you guys. Other than that, let's get back to the video. So this one actually starts at 0.5 and goes all the way up to 1.3. And that means there is 1.3 millimeter gap in between here. And you can see how loose this is. And that obviously prints just fine. And you can see right there. But the rest of these, why I like this so much they actually have little like levers that you can actually see how loose of a fit this is. So if I wanted my actual 3D prints to feel this loose, then I know I could do a 1.1 and this would be my new tolerance. But I mean, this is so loose, I can pull this out. Like that's how bad this one is. But if you make your way through here, you can actually see it starts to get tighter and tighter until we get to a 0.5. And the 0.5 is what I really like because the tolerance is good. You don't see a lot of wobble in it when you're going back and forth. And also I just, I think I want it a little looser to be able to flow freely. And when it comes to the fit of my 3D print, I want it to be able to slide in just fine. So a 0.5 is what I want. Now the one thing is, is this model actually comes with two versions. A version that everything is a lot tighter and then this one is where it's a lot looser. And I knew that mine was going to be either a 0.5 or a 0.6 just because of I've printed these things before and I knew how tight my printer was going to be able to allow. And this is one of those things over time, you're just going to kind of get it and you're going to know like, all right, this is probably the best tolerance for me to use for this model. And for me, it's going to be the 0.5 millimeters because I mean, it is, it doesn't like move smoothly, but it does move freely. And that's the thing. Like you can see up and down, there's not very much wobble versus over here. Look at how much wobble we have on that. But here, I mean, not a whole lot. And that's what you want to look at. And I'm not telling you that, you know, this is what you want to go with or this is what you want to go with. It really is all up to you. You want to make sure that you have a tolerance that you're comfortable with for whatever you're actually printing. But once we have the tolerance we want, then we're ready to jump back over to the calculator to add this into our measurements so we know what to scale this in 
in Kira or whatever modeling program you're actually doing your project in. So now that we know our tolerance, we can take that and put it into the calculator. So let's jump over there and let me show you how to do that. So now that we know what the tolerance we want to go with, with our 3D print, we can actually add this into the calculator. And the big thing to remember is we have two different ways that we can deal with our tolerance. We can reduce the amount of tolerance or we can increase the amount of tolerance. So if we wanted to reduce our tolerance, that is actually going to make it tighter and increasing the size of our 3D print. So just for example, if I put in five millimeters right here, you can see that we're gonna have to scale this to 119%. But if I put in five millimeters here, it's actually going to reduce it down to 79%. So that's just a big thing to remember when you're reducing and increasing and the differences. Because if we put five here and five here, you're gonna see that nothing's going to change because it evens itself out. So the big thing to realize is one of these should always be zero and the other one should be the tolerance that you are adding or taking away. So for this, we are actually going to be increasing our tolerance by a 0.5 millimeters. All right, so this is where the divide happens. You're either a person that just takes the model and 3D prints it, or you're the person that also is 3D modeling the file. So let's take these on one at a time. First, let's talk about the person that is just 3D printing. You're not a 3D modeler and that's fine, but what we're gonna do is jump over to Cura and I'm gonna show you how we can scale these down to make sure our parts and pieces are going to fit together nicely. So jumping back to the calculator, we can look over here again and see that we need to scale to a 97.61%. So this is the exact measurement we need to do to be able to add in our actual tolerance. So let's jump over to Cura. Now here's the thing. We actually have our new tolerance that we know we need to scale this to. And last time, we actually scaled both of these pieces to 99.6. But this time, we only want to scale one of them. Because if we bo scale both of these equally, then we're going to be running into the exact same issue to where they are going to be such a tight fit, but it's going to be a smaller fit. So all we have to do is realize that we are going to be shrinking this down. We want to use the actual peg because we want this peg to be smaller. So all we have to do is come over here to our scale and change this to 97.61 and hit enter. And now we have scaled this one down and it is ready to print. So let's go ahead and slice this and then throw this on the 3D printer. So once we have it 3D printed, there's a few things that you can notice. That obviously the top is a different size and it's not perfectly smooth. So if this is a model of like an arm attaching to a torso, that might not be that noticeable. And that is where you can really get away with this stuff. Being able to print it maybe just 1% or whatever the calculator tells you of how much smaller you should print this to be able to make it fit really well for you. Now, this is the other thing. If you actually need it to print and be perfectly precise, this method is not going to work for you very well. And you're probably going to have to reach out to the modeler and let them know that, hey, these parts don't fit together very well and you're going to have to decrease the size of the peg. It sucks, but there's a lot of bottles out there that just don't fit together no matter what you do. So you're going to have to scale them or see if the artist will do it for you. So for those of you that are actually 3D modeling your parts, you know, it's a perfect world for you because all you have to do is now that you know your tolerance, you just got to go in and change the peg to be that exact size. So we knew that my tolerance is a 0.5 millimeters. So instead of a 25 millimeter peg, I'm going to make it 24.5 millimeters. Leave this hole right here at 25 millimeters and guess what? It fits beautifully. So now you actually know how to get your parts to fit perfectly. And sometimes, I tell you what, it's not going to work out. It's just, if they don't fit, they don't fit. And sometimes you just got to take some sandpaper to it and let her go. Or just take a Dremel. That's what I've done multiple times. I'll just Dremel the heck out of something. And then surprisingly, it fits beautifully because there's no more peg and it's just a nub. But those are some options that might help you in the future. 
Now I have used this a few times for certain models that where arms will actually go into the torso or a leg will go into the torso and they just don't fit well. So I'll print the leg again and I will use my little calculator tool to realize that, okay, I need to bring this down at 99.2%. That way I can get it to fit a lot nicer. And this will help you a lot because when it comes to some of those models, for us that are painting stuff, it really doesn't matter most of the time if it's scaled down a tiny bit because nobody's going to know. Trust me, no one is going to know. Well, you'll know, and it's just something you're going to have to get over. I'm sorry. Now, like I said in the beginning, I, I know that this is not for everybody, but I feel like for a vast majority of us that are just 3D printing doodads and things like that, that aren't printing a specific thing for to fit in a certain area, but they're more pretty things and like models for us to paint, this method's going to work beautiful for you because we don't care if it's just a little bit smaller. Nobody's going to know. And it's going to fit good, and then you can actually glue it together and even putty the seams to where nobody can even tell that that was a different size. Maybe that's exactly what the model was supposed to look like. But for those of you that are very like, uh, no, it has to be absolutely perfect, well then, I, you're going to have to model it yourself, or you're going to have to talk to the modeler. And if you're not the modeler, I'm sorry, sometimes it's really difficult to try to get a hold of an artist to be able to change something so it'll 3D print better for you. But all in all, I hope this video has helped you, and... You know what? If you have a different method of doing what I'm showing you, I, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Tell me what you do and how is it different? Because I know there are so many different ways of like making your prints and parts fit perfectly. So leave them down below and I, I, I just, I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. And that's it. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll go ahead and I'll see you over here in this next video.